This video investigates the global transformation matrix, which we need to use if we have an off-axis constraint. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the first question, which is, when do we need to apply this global transformation matrix? Let's take a look at the six steps in the FAA solve process. The first step is the elemental stiffness matrices. Now at this point, don't need to apply it all, just depends on the elemental stiffness and element orientation, that's all. The next step though is when we go ahead and globe, or pardon me, assemble the global stiffness matrix equation. Now at this point is when we need to apply the global transformation matrix if off-axis constraints exist. And the reason is, is because when we get to the next step, which, which is when we want to apply the constraints in order to create our reduced matrix, it's only possible if we transform the coordinates using that global transformation matrix because we have that off-axis constraint which would be difficult to apply otherwise. And then once we do that then we can go ahead and go through the other three steps applying the nodal loads, solving for the displacements. Keep in mind those displacements are going to be in this transformed coordinate system. We can solve for the reactions and we can solve for the elemental results. So the critical steps here are steps two, when we assemble the global stiffness matrix, and step three, when we apply the constraints to create the reduced matrix. That's when we need to apply that global transformation matrix. So the global transformation matrix, its whole purpose is to relate coordinate orientations. Let's go ahead and take a look at our system again. There's our off-axis constraint at node two. And we can go ahead and draw the global displacements here, the horizontal displacements noted by the U's and the vertical displacements noted by the V's. Now here we're going to go ahead and draw a transformed set of coordinates here at node 2. And the reason we want these is because here we can constrain V2 prime to be zero because it can't go beyond that constraint, beyond that slope. Meanwhile, U2 prime is completely free. So we have our transformed global displacements. Note that U1 prime, V1 prime, U3 prime, UV3 prime, pardon me, those are the same as the global displacements. It's only node two, only node two that are transformed. And so the relationship between these transformed global displacements and the global displacements is that global transformation matrix. All right, so next, how do we create the global transformation matrix? Well, let's go ahead and draw out our system one more time there. There's our slope with angle beta. There's our global displacements. There's our transformed displacements there at node two due to that slope. And here we have our original global displacements there's our transformed global displacements, and these are related by that global transformation matrix. Now note that for node one and node three, all we have are ones, which means that there's a direct relationship. It's exactly the same. The transformed displacement at node one in the horizontal direction, U1 prime, is exactly the same as U1, exactly the same. The only thing that changes in this example is node two. And so we just apply a coordinate transformation there, just like we would for the elemental transformation matrix. And now all those empty spaces just get populated with a bunch of zeros. So that's our global transformation matrix. That's how it's applied. You could guess that global transformation matrix is always there, but if we don't have an off-axis constraint, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's go ahead and see how we use that global transformation matrix to create our transformed global stiffness matrix. So in global coordinates, this is our global stiffness matrix equation. Our global forces are equal to our global stiffness matrix multiplied by our global displacements. Now, if we wanna go ahead and apply that global transformation matrix, we can do that to both sides here. This is the same equation. This is the same equation, right? The global forces are really just the same as the transform, pardon me, the, 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 the transpose of the global transformation matrix multiplied by the global forces in that transformed system. And we can make the same relationship here with our 
global displacements. And when we go ahead and rearrange for the global forces in the transformed coordinates, we get the following. So all we're really doing is taking that transpose of that global transformation matrix and bringing it on over here. Remember that the transpose is exactly the same as the inverse uh, due to the principle of orthogonality with these transformation matrices. And this portion is our global stiffness matrix in the transformed coordinates. Now that we have transformed our global stiffness matrix, we can actually create our reduced matrix. It's now possible because of that transformation. So when we have our transformed global matrix equation, there it is just symbolically. There's our system again. Here is what our transformed global matrix equation looks like for our forces. Here's what it looks like for our displacements. This is the spot where our global stiffness matrix and the transform coordinates is going to go. Remember that our nodes one and node three, those degrees of freedom there, the displacements there are exactly the same. In the transform coordinates, it's only node two that has any type of change at all. We know that node two is constrained only in that V2 prime direction. And then of course, U1 is completely constrained. So what we do is we go ahead and remove the columns, remove the rows that could correspond to our constrained degrees of freedom. Then what we have left is our reduced stiffness matrix equation, taking a while to kind of shade everything in there and then outline this to make it a little bit more visible. There we go. And there's our arrow to say this is our reduced stiffness matrix equation, the primes indicating that these are in our transformed coordinates. Great. So that's our introduction to the global transformation matrix. We have some reflection questions. The first reflection question is asking what is the purpose of the global transformation matrix? When is that global transformation matrix applied in the finite element analysis solving process? What type of constraint requires the use of the global transformation matrix? And how is the global stiffness matrix in the transformed coordinates related to the global stiffness matrix in global coordinates? And that concludes the reflection questions for this video on the global transformation matrix. Thanks.